the hunting can't be the only thing you do. Because right. as the phrase goes, a hunter can feed a family, a farmer can feed a village. All right, hello again. I'm standing here with Alex Kuschishin. It's close enough, it's close, close enough. enough. Also known as Alex from Sales Boomerang. That's also my full name. Alex from Sales Boomerang. Anyway, <laughs> very cool guy, very heavy influencer on social media and does a great job promoting his company, promoting why they're in the industry and telling everybody that who will listen uh, about what what makes his uh, his company's product so special. Yes. Uh, so let's back up a little bit yeah. and talk about what was the impetus for beginning uh, or for starting Sales Boomerang. What did you see was a need that was severely uh, lacking in the industry? You know, um, it, I'm not from the industry, and I think it was these virgin eyes that that allowed us to see something that was always there. But you ever? walk past like a crack on the street and because it's been there forever and sure. you just step over it like it's not there but sometimes someone visits for the first time and they're like what is this crack and you're like crack what crack oh I didn't never even noticed it so that's what we saw um, I was consulting for a mortgage marketing company that was doing a ton of and they're their monster league group they're amazing they, they're the number one you know agency direct mail marketing company in the industry and I was doing some consulting and saw that they produced 212,000 unique phone calls for their clients in 2015, okay? Out of those 212,000 unique phone calls, they, they were able to track for their clients approximately 20,000 of those that turn into loans. Mm -hmm. And that was on the front of their website. Okay. And that was very confusing to me because I come from an industry where conversions are at 50%, 60%, 70%. Sure. And all of a sudden, this company is promoting 10%? I didn't understand. So I wanted to find out what happened. I said, what happened to the other 190,000 people? Mm -hmm. And the answer was, it could be a million different things. Rate wasn't right. Equity wasn't right. The house fell through. Their credit wasn't there. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Sure. I said, great, fantastic. So then you're going to take those 190,000 people and bring them back to the lenders that paid for that advertising. Right. And they're like, no. I mean, that's not how it works. Right. What's going to happen is they're going to repurchase that again. I said, wait a second. I'm already in their database. They've spoken to me. And then to contact me again, they have to repurchase. Why don't you just pick up the phone and call me? Right. He's like, uh, that's not how it works. And that's where we saw the issue. Okay. Once we figured out that it's only a few things that keep somebody from getting a loan and there's only a few things that can remind someone that it's time for another loan because it's beneficial for them, sure. all we did was build all the, the, the integrations with the right data points and gave it purpose. As you know, our, our trademark that we own is no borrower will left behind. Correct. We gave data a purpose. Data is data is just data, that's it. You can buy it in, 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 in big bunches, bulk. and in, exactly in bulk, yep. and then try to figure out what to do with it, and you think you got it right, you don't know. Because this industry is so lucrative with the business it does, mm -hmm. you can waste money and be profitable, right? Yep. And so what we wanted to do is say, look, Number one, let's cut away efficiencies. Number two, let's create a better experience for the borrower. Mm -hmm. Let's create a better experience for the loan officer. Mm -hmm. Let's make this thing more profitable. Mm -hmm. And let's create an industry, which by the way, is the largest industry in the world, right? $30 trillion is from, from, from what I uh, recently heard. Mm -hmm. um, let's make this industry envious. Right now, we, this industry, looks at other industries and goes, oh, I wish we could be like them. Their best yes, yeah. stop that. Let's be the ones that they look at and go, oh, I wish we could do what they're doing. That's yep. brilliant how they put that together. Mm -hmm. So what was behind it is just really, um, and I, one of my favorite things to talk about is when I got into this industry, and I'm sorry, I'm getting a little bit long-winded on your answer you're here. You're good, you're good. When, when I got into this, everyone kept saying, we need to fix the industry, we need to fix the industry, we need to fix the industry. And by saying the word fix, what we're saying is at some point it was not broken. And I challenge that. What if we're just using a broken system? What if we've gotten used to using a broken system? So we don't want to fix it. We want to change it completely. I mean, completely change it. Have it start from a place where consumers feel like they own a bank, mm -hmm. right? Instead of us owning our clients, let our clients own us. Let them feel like they're part of something, not tell them, but let them feel it. And how do you do that? You give them control. How do you give them control? You tell them about the things that you're going to be doing for them. Mm -hmm. And when do they, would you like to know when you have $50,000 in cash in your home? We'll tell you. Would you like to know when you qualify for a lower rate without sending you lots of mail and trying to, no. Well, we'll just tell you when you're completely ready for it. And that was what was behind. It's much easier to articulate it now because we've done it for a couple of years, but that is what was driving us to do this. Well, that, that's awesome because uh, what you were just describing, that's basically, you just laid out the game plan that every top producer figured out 
a while back. Yes. And that there's a reason why yes. that they are a top producer because they have that kind of strategic mindset. So all that you have done is figured out a way brilliantly yeah. to take those strategies and multiply across multiple loan officers. So now you basically have, have taken the the golden egg yeah. uh, that was pr previously just with with some top producer at some bank, and now you have made it available to the masses. And so that that's that's a fantastic service that is only going to serve to benefit all the I don't want to say mid level producers, but basically folks who as are aspiring to get to that next level yes. in their business, no matter where they are in that spectrum. Yes. And so that that's what's really cool about the uh, about the service that you guys are providing. And you've also made it easy so that everybody that's in those category of, hey, I'm here, I want to get there, does not have to reinvent the wheel or yeah. invent their own system or go through the pains of discovering all those different things. So that's very cool. And it's and it's delivered in a frictionless way, right? right? It's You don't have to learn new technology. You never log, 99.9% .9 of our clients never log into our system. We integrate with their CRM, so their CRM has all of that information delivered right there. We collect the data from the CRM, we push it right back into the CRM, we push it right back into the marketing automation. Mm -hmm. So there's no technology to learn. The only thing you have to learn is how you want not learn. You have to ask yourself, what kind of relationship do you want with your customers? Right. That's all you have. That's it. If you want a good relationship, right. then this system works 100% of the time. Yep. If you don't want a good relationship and you'd rather hunt all the time, you just want to be a hunter, mm -hmm. then you're going to go out and hunt. You saw me speak at, at Engage, at Engage yeah. um, and I was talking about farming, becoming a farmer. So on average, a consumer will do 11 transactions, mortgage-related transactions in their lifetime, 11. So let's just assume for one second you have 10, you're a lender and you have 10,000 people in your database, 10,000 customers. Just assume that. That is 110,000 potential loans. Mm -hmm. That organization that's got 10,000 of them, I believe they can live a good life off of 110,000. Now, of course you're going to go out and hunt and get more customers. Of course you're going to want to bring in new business and get referrals and, and always bring in uh, fresh, fresh opportunities. But the hunting can't be the only thing you do. Because right. as the phrase goes, a hunter can feed a family, a farmer can feed a village. Yep. Yes. And so, to add to that, number one, it takes uh, between 5 and 20% of new customers you can convert into a deal. Sure. Between 70 and 90% of existing customers or relationships that you've had can turn into a deal. Right. So you're talking about 500% greater chance to convert existing relationships, right. people you've talked to before, than a net new one. Again, net new is very important but it's what you do with that net, net new customer. When you drop them in your database and you're planting that seed, you go, there are 10 more of these to come. There are right. every customer you look at and say, there are 10 more, and I know now that I will have a chance at all 10 of them. I may not win them all, I may not be the best fit for all of them, but I know I have 10 more chances to earn that person's business. Times, their friends, their family, their coworkers, all this good stuff. Very cool, very cool. Well, you, your product, I've seen the demo of it. The product yeah. is awesome. Let's talk. Let's uh, back up and just kind of focus on the on the industry as a whole. Yeah. What do you see going into 2020? What do you see as one of the biggest challenges, whether it's a challenge that sales memory can solve or not, or CRMs can solve? What do you see as one of the biggest challenges for uh, for mortgage lenders or the individual LO going into 2020? I, I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna talk about a challenge. I'm gonna talk about what I I believe is the fundamental um, secret. What is so simple, but it's right in, it's in plain sight, so it's it's invisible. Sure. If if I'm a lender, if I'm in a mortgage space, here's what I'm teaching every one of my producers. I'm teaching them how to be curious, mm -hmm. and I'm teaching them how to listen. Mm -hmm. That's it. The tech there's the tech is so great out there. There's so many wonderful technology companies out there that the tech is designed to automate and help you out already. Sure. The one thing that tech can't do is make you a better human. That you have to do on your own. Right. And one of the best ways to be a better human is to be curious, genuinely curious, and to ask questions. Use this as double time than this, right? right? So you have two to one. That's not my phrase, somebody said it, I like it. But I think Dr. Seuss said it. I think Dr. Seuss, Dr. Seuss is brilliant. Um, uh, he can write a book in 40 words, with only using 40 words, and bring but on a challenge. And, and bring a tear to your eye doing it. Yes, yep. so um, it's about being curious and learning how to listen. Right now, with all this technology, with all this automation, with all this extra time we have, mm -hmm. the best thing we can do for the people who want to work with us, which are consumers, which we are too, sure. is learn how to listen. Absolutely. You will watch your business explode in ways you've never seen before if you just listen. And you are genuinely curious. There's all of this backup support you don't have to think about anymore. Mm -hmm. So just be the best human you can be. And I'm telling you, this industry will be something that other industries envy. 
if we can do that. Because we are in charge of the greatest asset that most people own. Yep. So why not be the best we can be? That's yep. it. It's a simple question like that. That that, that is some some great advice right there. And and you don't know this about me. I used to be a high school teacher, mm -hmm. and that what you just talked about was one of the preeminent things that I tried to get across to my students was the ability for them to think critically mm. and to ask great questions. Not yes. like I didn't. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a, a fan of the whole question everything type of, type of thing. I get it, yeah. but asking the right questions. I, I even had a sign up in front of my, my classroom, had a whole bunch of motivational signs, posters and quotes and stuff. And one of those, uh, one of the quotes was, uh, uh, sometimes the right question is better than the right answer. Yes. Because if I'm giving you the right, the right answer or the correct answer to the wrong question, have mm. I benefited you at all? No. Not at all. No. So asking the right questions is much yes. more important than just asking any question. It's like that idea of putting the, the, the ladder on the wrong wall. Yeah. Finding out when you get, that's the same thing, right? You give, yeah. you give the right answer to the wrong question, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hadn't improved the person. So, yeah. excellent job. Uh, happy birthday. If you, if you are walking around, you see Alex later today, hug. give him a happy birthday hug. Yes. Not just a handshake, not a high five, no. a happy birthday, birthday hug. hug. So here, here, like here's my second one. It's a practice. That's, 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 that, that's, that how you do, that's how you do a hug. That was the awkward bro hug, yeah. where I kind of came in like yeah, three quarters no. and yeah. stuff. It works. It, I put my hands all the way around. Hey, you, yeah. You're, a real, I'm a good hugger. You are a good hugger. Yeah. You're free to do that. All right, man. Thank you so much. It was good Appreciate seeing you. Good catching up with you. See all you all, right. all, all, all around. See you all around. Thanks. All right, brother. Take care. Bye.